Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Wednesday, October 28th, 2015. Wow, it's a wet, rainy morning here today. It's just raining and raining. I think it's supposed to rain a good chunk of the day. Michigan is pretty much just covered by green on the radar. So, yeah, wet, rainy, yay. And this is, this is probably like my least favorite rain because it's cold rain. You know, I don't mind a, a warm summer rain kind of thing, but these cold fall and spring rains, just, I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. I got an A on my second accounting test, which is cool. And we basically uh, went over all of the material for test three, which is in two weeks from yesterday. Uh, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. He actually said this was an easier test, and I can I can believe it. So, so yeah, I've got two weeks to, to get used to the problems and, 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 and make them happen. And, and so I'm feeling good about that. So, yeah, I'll be, I'll be okay on this. I don't need to, like, get a straight A on this because all I need is at least a C so the credit will transfer but you know I, I wouldn't mind doing good you know but if I walk out of there with a B plus or something uh, I'm fine with that that horrifies my wife but I'm okay with that because it doesn't it doesn't really gonna hit my GPA at Walls and that's the only GPA I, I care about I don't really care about my OCC GPA for a random collection of five classes that are not going to go for any kind of a degree there. So I had a Facebook friend who posted yesterday that said uh, he was introducing his wife and his son, who I think is around 10, 9, you know, give or take, somewhere in there, to Star Wars. Yeah, I can certainly understand sort of his son not having seen it before now. I, I don't understand adults that haven't seen Star Wars. You know, to me, that's just kind of like... I, I just don't... You know, To me, Star Wars is this wondrous thing, and, and the thought that so, there are adults out there that have not seen it blow me away. But whatever. I won't, I won't drive people for their poor life choices. <laughs> But he, he posted the question, I think, just to get the discussion up more so than... Sorry, I got a sudden break here in the wet. Um, more just to prompt discussion than because he really felt like he needed validation. But he asked, what was the proper order to watch them in? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3? Uh, if you're one of these unfortunate people that has not watched Star Wars, the, the difference is... Those are the episode numbers, not the order in which they were produced. So, the first one was A New Hope, Episode 4. That was the Star Wars from 1977. Followed by Episode 5, which was The Empire Strikes Back. Followed by Episode 6, which was The Return of the Jedi. Right? Yes. I, I, I call them by their short names so much that having to pull out the first two, the, the longer name, is sometimes a little difficult. And then one was Phantom Menace, and that was the prequel. That was the first series. Uh, it was the prequel. It was the first of the prequel series. So one was Phantom Menace, two was Attack of the Clones, and three was Revenge of the Sith, I believe. Wow. So... You know, most people chimed in saying you should see them four, five, six, one, two, three, which is the order in which they were released, uh, and that's the order I think is the best order as well. And you know, there there's there a few reasons for that. You know, number one, you've got your whole well. You know, the artist did them in this order. You know, I guess that being George Lucas prim- primarily. You know, they were done in this order, so that's the story that that Lucas and Lucasfilm wants to tell and how they want to tell it. And, you know, so there is some logic 
to that argument. But, you know, and there is a definite, you know, logical flow in that, you know, your start episode one, and by the way, spoilers, if you haven't seen Star Wars, here's spoilers. If you haven't seen Star Wars, stop playing this right now and go watch Star Wars in the order of four, five, six, one, two, three. I'm continuing now. Um, you know, you've got the 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 uh, uh, Re- Republic is in full swing in Phantom Menace, and so over the course of those three, we see it starting to crumble, and the beginning of the Empire taking shape, and then in A New Hope, the Empire is fully in control. The last vestiges of the Republic are being swept away, and. You know, it's the Empire versus this little ragtag rebellion that Luke Skywalker, the main character, falls into. So there is a definite logical path going one, two, three, four, five, six. However, I want to propose the argument that if you watch him in that order, I think you're, I think you're, for me at least, losing some of the gravitas that are in the first three movies. When you've watched them four, five, six, like I have, and like many people have, um, you you know the Empire as it is. You know um, Darth Vader as he is. You know the state of technology as it exists at that time. And then when you go back to the prequel, you get to kind of see, okay, how do we get there? And so there are certain things where I feel like, you know, they've got more, they've got more, they've got a bit more emotional weight to them seeing how they get there, seeing the Republic crumble, knowing that it's going to be replaced by this empire that we've seen is evil, to the point where it would destroy a planet's worth of innocence on a whim. And so there is, it it adds a whole nother level to the emotional impact of watching a republic that's not unlike ours here in the United States crumble and you can see it starting to morph into the empire the evil empire from a new hope same thing with Anakin's story Uh, you know Anakin's story knowing that Anakin is Darth Vader from um, Return of the Jedi. So you know that fact. That informs his whole story. You start off in Phantom Menace and he's this little boy. And you don't really see anything dark about him at all other than he's a little willful and he's a little stubborn. But you wouldn't characterize him as evil. And then of course over the course of that Trilogy, you see the evil start to take hold until you get to the end of uh, Sif 3. And, you know. Darth, you know, Anakin Skywalker, because of his injuries, is entombed in his Darth Vader outfit, and that gives that that gives that moment a lot of weight. That I think if you started watching it from movie one, you probably wouldn't you wouldn't get why that's a climactic moment for that film. You, you, you wouldn't really understand. So, so you know, what does it mean that he's encased in this black outfit with a mask on? Is he going to be like that for the rest of his life? 
we know the answer to that if we've seen four or five and six first. We know what it means that he's encased in this outfit. We know what he's going to become or what he's already become that maybe he doesn't even realize it yet. You know, at the end of of episode three, you know, his grasp on evil is relatively young. I mean, it's just been a matter of days. Granted, he's done horrific things and, you know, killing all the Jedi and all the Padawans and all this, but but knowing that, yes, he's 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 going to be, you know, by the time of, of A New Hope and um, the Empire Strikes Back, he's, he's just going to be, you know, pretty much pure evil. Now Luke sees that there's a little, and, and that's the other thing. We see at the end of, of um, Return of the Jedi that, you know, Luke sees that there is good in him yet. There's still some good. So even though we know he's going down this dark path, we know there's, there's a little bit of that boy inside. There's a little bit of the good Anakin inside. And, and he will be ultimately redeemed at the end. So there's a whole lot of... There, there's this whole emotional stew and there's this whole um, new, uh, layer of nuances that I think are just lost if you watch in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I really do. Um, so if you haven't seen them, I would encourage you to go see them. I mean, I love these movies. I really do. They are one of the founding passions of my teenage years. Um, and if it's Star Wars, I'll watch it. You know, don't listen to the people that are like, oh, the prequels are horrible, that being one, two, three. They, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. They have problems, some, but there's some great stuff in there too. You know, people like to, to, to rail about Jar Jar Binks and Phantom Menace, and yeah, he's stupid. He's meant to be there for comic relief. He's pretty stupid. But Phantom Menace has got some got some great you know things going on of its own, ignoring Jar Jar Binks. And then I love the fact how in Revenge of the Sith. Jar Jar Binks is used as the patsy to bring about the entirety of the Empire. I love that. And I'm sure he did that because everybody hated Jar Jar Binks uh, so much that so he's, he's like, well, fine, then I'm going to... I'm going to use him, you know, to kind of... Uh, you know, bring about this whole thing to show just what... You know, everybody thought he was an idiot, so I'm going to show just how much of an idiot he is. He gets totally played to bring about this evil, soul-crushing empire. Yeah, I, I just love that. So, so yeah, I, 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 I do embrace the prequels as part of canon. Um, you know, I, you know there, there, are, there are some problems with them. I mean, there are some problems with, there are some problems with uh, A New Hope. Uh, and um, uh, the Empire Strikes Back. There was just a there was just a GIF I saw on Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, one of the three, um, where somebody took the scene in uh, The Empire Strikes Back right after right after he's cut Luke's hands off and is telling him that you know is doing the you know Obi Wan did not tell you what happened to your father. And then Luke's doing the whole, He told me enough! He told me you killed him! No, I am father. And all that whole thing. And then it kind of, the, the, the conversation digresses, and he's talking about how, you know, oh, you know, I, I built C-3PO, I, I, I blew up a trade federation ship, and, you know, at the end of it, and, 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 you know, Luke's doing all this, I blew up a Death Star, I used to go... 
go uh, lander speed uh, racing in Baggers Canyon or something like that. I forget what what word it is. Um, and and he's he's coming out. Luke's coming off so whiny that that finally Vader's like, you know, forget about it. I don't know whose son you are because you, you're much too much of a of a, of a whiny little kid to be my son. <laughs> You know, I watch I watch A New Hope now, and I have to kind of grip my teeth because this guy just whines the whole freaking time, and it continues a bit into um, Empire, but they did kind of tone it down a bit. And then, of course, in Jedi, he's like, "I'm a Jedi. I do not get flapped. I am unflappable." So, so yeah, I mean, all, all the movies they, they have their strong points, they have their weak points. The prequels are no exception. There are some great things there, however, and so I am not one of these people that just writes them off, and I heartily recommend that uh, you don't either. Anyway, uh, I am at 16 minutes. What a surprise that I go along when I'm talking about Star Wars. I am shocked. Uh, that was sarcasm. Anyway, I'm gonna let this be this be the, I'm gonna let this be this. I'm going to let this be it for today, and I'll be back tomorrow. So I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.